Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Donald Trump has used the latest presidential debate to defend his lewd comments about women, describing them as locker room talk and insisting the behavior of the former U.S. president, Bill Clinton, was far worse. Locker room banter. You describe kissing women without consent, grabbing their genitals. That is sexual assault. You brag that you have sexually assaulted women. Do you understand that? No, I didn't say that at all. I don't think you understood what was said. This was locker room talk. Uh, I'm not proud of it. I apologize to my family. I apologize to the American people. Certainly, I'm not proud of it, but this is locker room talk. You know, I'm not proud of it, but this is locker room talk. Whoa. I did try her. She was married. <laughs> huge news, Sarah. I'm going to use some Tic Tacs just in case I start kissing her. You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. You just kiss. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the do anything but this is locker room talk he has said that the video doesn't represent who he is but i think it's clear to anyone who heard it that it represents exactly who he is well since donald Tr uh, donald trump's lewd comments were made public millions of women have been sharing their personal experiences of sexual assaults it all started when a canadian author kelly oxford shared her own account of five different sexual assaults and asked others to talk about their own under the hashtag not okay. We can talk to two women now who've been sexually assaulted on a number of occasions and they shared their stories on the not okay hashtag. Amanda June, who lives in New Jersey and Nicole Noel who lives in Florida. They waived their right to anonymity to talk to you this morning. Thank you very much for speaking to our British audience. Nicole, you tweeted about yes. a number of sexual assaults um, and I know you're comfortable in, in talking to our audience a little bit about them. Um, yes. Um first uh, assault that I could remember, I mean, the most chilling thing about this hashtag and, and responding to it was a lot of women, me included, had to really think about how many there were and kind of list out um, because there wasn't just one multiple one incident. You know, there have been multiple over the course of my life. Um, and the first several uh, took place when I was only about eight at the uh, at the bus stop where there was a boy at my bus stop who, who thought it was funny to chase me around grab my breast, you know, my chest area, I mean, I was only eight, um, grab my crotch uh, and laugh every time he would catch me and laugh with his friends. And, you know, this went for a long time. And um, I never told anyone because I just assumed that people would think it was my fault um, or that I was gross or dirty or something. And that's why he was doing it. Um, so that was the first several um, for me. Yeah. And then uh, again, when I was 14, um, a friend, well, not a friend, a, a friend's boyfriend that I knew that I went to school with um, offered to drive me home and he drove me down a dark road and, um, and attacked me, um, put my hand on his, um, on his crotch and, and, and tried to kiss me. And I, I managed to fend him off. Um, but again, I never told anyone. So I assumed that people would blame me for it. And um, so, and, and there's just a lot of shame and embarrassment um, a, a, attached with, with these incidents. Yeah. And um, so I never said anything let me later. In, let me bring in Amanda on that point, because uh, this weekend, Amanda, you've spoken about an incident that happened with a man in a cab. Again, you have not spoken about it before. No, no, ma'am, I have not. Um, do, do you want me to explain what happened? If, you, if you want to. Oh, sure, absolutely. So this happened uh, four years ago. I was 22 at the time. Um, I was commuting home from a job in Manhattan and we had train trouble. It was about 11 o'clock at night. I had no money for a cab and this older gentleman, he was probably 65, he said he was already drunk and he said he would pay for my cab. Would I like to share a ride? Sure. Another passenger jumped in because he was going to the same train station. So now you have the driver a male passenger, the older gentleman passenger, and myself, and I'm in the back with the older man. And for the entire 45 minute taxi drive, this man just, his greedy hands are going all over me. And I'm very vocal about 
stop touching me. I'm engaged. Do you have a wife? Mm. Do you have children? And he's telling me about his daughters and his wife while he's grabbing me and touching me. The passenger and the, and the driver aren't doing anything about this. Mm. Nothing. Nothing. If they just let it go on for 45 minutes and when we get to my car, I just exit the taxi and get to my car. I got home and I didn't even tell my fiance it happened until yesterday morning. And so talking, I'm, I'm not surprised, talking about it now, what difference has that made to you? Um, see, I had just finished uh, graduate school and I was getting my degree in creative writing, nonfiction, and I've been working on a memoir about me being raped and the sexual assault I've lived through and just trying to give women a voice to speak about this because there's so much shame attached and there shouldn't be and our culture exactly how donald trump said it that this is locker room banter that's what our culture says it is like we have to feel shame because men excuse this behavior every single day okay let me and ask we're so used to it. Yes. nicole let me ask you what you made of the the the, the explanation slash justification of donald trump saying look it's just locker room banter Look, there's a rape culture and throughout the world. And um, I think that video is a perfect example of it. And, and not just Trump's uh, disgusting, vile talk, um, but also, you know, uh, Billy Bush is uh, giggling and laughing in response to the gross things that Trump was saying about women and that he does to the things that he does to women routinely because he's he's rich and he's a, a man with power. And um, I think that the silence is one of the things that perpetuates the rape culture. And I understand why so many victims don't say anything. I mean, I didn't say anything for a really long time. And, um, and because there is so much shame attached to it, but, but silence is one of the things that perpetuates this and, and allows it to continue. And the more women who speak out about it, the more men who speak out about it, uh, you know, the more I think hopefully we can, you know, shine a light into that dark corner and, and um, go a long way towards eliminating that. I mean, friends of mine have contacted me since I've posted about this and a couple of them have girls and they say, oh, we need to talk to our girls. And, you know, you need to talk to your boys too, because it's not just up to women to avoid being victims of sexual assault. It's up to men to not be perpetrators of sexual okay. assault. I'm really grateful that you've spoken to our audience. Thank you very much for your time. Nicole, you Noel. Thank you. And Amanda, thank you very much for coming on the programme. Really appreciate it. Amanda Juno. Now, for some, politics on the other side of the pond, it was billed as the showdown that could decide the US election as Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump went head to head in a candidates debate for the second time. After a disastrous weekend for the Trump campaign, which saw the Republican candidate having to defend comments he'd made about groping women, the pressure was on Mrs Clinton to bury her opponent once and for all. In the end, with Mr. Trump deciding attack was the best form of defence, it wasn't so much sparks flying as fireworks exploding. Let's take a look at some of the highlights. Ladies and gentlemen, the Republican nominee for President Donald J. Trump and the Democratic nominee for President Hillary Clinton. You describe kissing women without consent, grabbing their genitals. That is sexual assault. You brag that you have sexually assaulted women. Do you understand that? No, I didn't say that at all. I don't think you understood what was said. This was locker room talk. Uh, I'm not proud of it. I apologize to my family. I apologize to the American people. Certainly, I'm not proud of it. He has said that the video doesn't represent who he is, but I think it's clear to anyone who heard it that it represents exactly who he is. If you look at uh, Bill Clinton, far worse, minor words, and his was action. His was what he's done to women. There's never been anybody in the history of politics in this nation that's been so abusive to women. And I'll tell you what, I didn't think I'd say this, but I'm going to say it, and I hate to say it, but if I win, I am going to instruct my attorney general to get a special prosecutor to look into your situation because there has never been so many lies, so much deception. There has never been anything like it. And we're going to have a special prosecutor. When I speak, I go out and speak. The people of this country are furious. It's just awfully good that someone 
with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country. Because you'd be in jail. Secretary Clinton. I pay tax and I pay federal tax too. But I have a write-off. A lot of it's depreciation, which is a wonderful charge. I love depreciation. You know, she's given it to us. Hey, if she had a problem, for 30 years she's been doing this, Anderson. I say it all the time. She talks about health care. Why didn't she do something about it? She talks about taxes. Why didn't she do something about it? She doesn't do anything about anything other than talk. With her, it's all talk and no action. Would either of you name one positive thing that you respect in one another? I respect his children. His children are incredibly able and devoted, and I think that says a lot about Donald. She does fight hard, and she doesn't quit, and she doesn't give up, and I consider that to be a very good trait. Well, I'm joined now by Jan Harper Hayes, who is the former vice president of Republicans Overseas, and the playwright and critic Bonnie Greer, who is a Hillary Clinton supporter. Welcome, both of you. Jan Harper Hayes, just to be clear, is it over now for Donald Trump following the, the revelations of those audio tapes? No, it, it, if he had not handled himself as well as he handled himself last night, it would have been over. But um, a lot of people are saying he really is back in the game. Plus, 96% of his supporters are still with him. Only 4% defected. Are you still with him? Are you still defending I him am, after this? I, I will continue to defend him because we need a Republican in the White House mm -hmm. for tax reform, for the Supreme Court. It's it's vital. Right. What was your reaction to the tapes about him bragging about groping women? You know, asking me is um, a little bit unfair because I wrote a bestseller and interviewed over 4,000 men and followed 43 men's lives. And um, men like Donald Trump have been my clients. Alpha males behave that way. So it wasn't shocking to me. It was lewd. But should he be president? You know, it was 11 years ago. And I know that there is an enormous amount of anti-bias. There's an enormous amount of criticism. But is he the same? And how, what has he learned from this? He's still in the game, says Jan Harper Hayes. Well, um, still believes he he's still there. Of course he is. I mean, because he's an alpha male. And, you know, it's interesting to listen to Jan because I have Republicans in my family. Um, and people, people don't deal with the fact that there's a strong African-American conservatism that's very quiet, but it's there. Okay, this is epitomized by people like Condoleezza Rice, Colin Powell. They're gone from here. Now, what's interesting to listen to Jan, and I totally respect it, it's very interesting. Many Republicans like her are like, you know, and there are people who are saying we have to vote for this man because we do need a Republican. We're in a cycle now. We do need a Republican in the White House. But they're not 100% for him, and the reason they're not because he's not a Republican. He's taken over the Republican Party. And that's the part that's scary for a lot of people. He did a lot of dog whistling last night, which is how he survived. He did a lot of low information, low ball waffling, which talked to his supporters. And these are not necessarily the Republican Party. Right. I mean, the Could debate we did... agree oh. that we have the most unfavorable, mm. dislike no, candidates no across the board? That. And that, no question about that. Really, you, you, you would agree with that with Hillary Clinton? Hillary Clinton's unfavorables are below his, but they're up there, and they've been dug up for the last three <laughs> years. And one of the reasons that that exists is because we are in a political environment now, not the kind that I grew up in, where we are in a media-driven, social media-driven age where people can actually intervene in a process that took a lot more thinking and nuancing. Hillary Clinton was up there last night giving policies. Now, you can like them or not, but she was doing policies. He was doing sound bites and 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 talking to his base, and the media was egging this craziness on. Right. What do you say, though, Jan? I mean, it, it seemed to many people that the debate plumbed new lows, really, in terms of political discourse. Do you agree? Uh, I think the whole debate season through the primaries 
and now does. It, I mean, but this debate, particularly between the two of them, talking about sexual allegations on both sides, the personal insults, the prowling round the studio, they wouldn't shake hands. I mean, what's happened to American? Donald put politics? his hand out, and actually, the live polls um, noticed that. Um, she didn't want to shake hands with him. Um, but, you know, I think, I think there are some really important things to look at. Um, seven out of ten voters think the country's going in the wrong direction. Three think it's okay to write. Um, what we need to understand, and, and really what voters are deliberating, do we want someone status quo, cautious, security, values the, the institutions. Do we want someone more like JFK or Ronald Reagan, here and now, takes action, doesn't spend a is lot Donald of time Donald Trump, Trump, Trump in that like category? JFK. That's what I did. That's what yeah, I, I'm hearing you. Right. Like, is that, do you good, where is that comparison with JFK and I'm Ronald Reagan? I'm old enough to remember JFK, Reagan. The Republican Party hasn't run this fast from their top candidates since Watergate. Okay, so the question... Can I explain why I said it? Well, I had him take the presidential temperament assessment used with 41 presidents. Right, but and, John, let's yeah. just take the point, though, yeah, about because, the number okay. of Republicans it's, it's, who, it's are, really, who are deserting, yeah. it's really or deserting important. him. Complete, He's losing yeah. white suburban women. He's losing women like Jan. She knows it's true, and what's out there... People are talking about a silent Trump. I'm putting my money on the silent Hillary. I think there are people on the right who are sitting in the back, like Barbara Bush, at George H.W. Bush, Colin Powell, Condoleezza Rice, and said, I can't, my country is first. Well, and on that, Jan, you are quoted as having said that Donald Trump is psychologically imbalanced. When you say She's that right. people don't want Hillary Clinton as a continuation of the status quo and that she's a deeply unpopular candidate. Is it worth voting for someone who's psychologically imbalanced, in uh, your view? Uh, let's, let's be accurate about the quote. I raised the issue that since the convention, and so it was on August 3rd, that there was an element of him that was concerning me in his behavior that, w that looked like psychologically mm. unbalanced. Okay. And, you know, I have very very cautiously been watching things, been in touch with the campaign people, the RNC. And for me, he changing his leadership, he's making progress. Now, but honestly... Where, where's he changing his leadership? I mean, I, I, if, oh, you, if you're talking session. about bragging <laughs> of <laughs> sexual assault <laughs> and Lockham, how's he changing it? Oh, you know what? Uh, taking that as sexual assault, as one who has counseled sexual assault victims, he even said last night it was more bragging and he hadn't done it but okay. but but uh, but I think I think why I am not so worried on either side of it is we've got Congress and we just might spend two years in gridlock. Okay, let me, I mean, that is one of the things that put, put forward by Republicans that, uh, that there would be gridlock. Um, why didn't Hillary Clinton, to coin a phrase, kill off his president, presidency nomination? Because she's, she's not a mud wrestler. She came out there with her policies. 85% yeah. of the people, young kids who are watching this, in our country, in America, people go, we have civics, and they go back to school and talk about the debates. But wasn't she, it an opportunity missed? No, I mean, she didn't have to be a mumbling. No, it wasn't. She, she had everything there in front no, of her, and she still didn't she manage would to have do had it. to go in there on her husband and deal with what he was putting out there. He was putting out garbage, garbage in, garbage out. And she made a decision. She won the debate in terms of the polls. Mm, she did. She won the debate. Some of them were very close in Ohio. Yeah, but women, women are sitting around, I promise you. And one thing Jan said was very good and very true. All right. Women are sitting around thinking, this one, who was prowling behind her like an orange golem, is not somebody I want to be the president of the United States. Well, I think we've got that loud <laughs> and clear. Um, he's not out of the game yet, is he? It doesn't seem so, which is quite shocking to me, because I would have thought he would be out of the game. And I think that um, we've just had, you know, all the stuff around... Uh, Jimmy Savile and, you know, a man who was so people are not surprised now because he was so gross on the outside. People couldn't believe he was that gross on the inside. And I just think that Trump has told us what he's like. You know, he doesn't respect women in any and way. And his supporters and, still and, support and him. And yet still, 
he's still got the support. And you're going to give a man like that the keys to the White House, make him one of the most powerful men in the country, somebody who doesn't respect women. Nobody will be safe. It's the, you know, he already said it's about having power and it's about powerful people over the powerless. And you're going to give somebody who already abuses power more power? I just don't understand it. What depresses me the most during this election year is that it also has become personalities as opposed to policies as opposed to dealing with it's all but, it's always but personalities Trump doesn't to talk some extent about but let me bring let me bring let me bring well he, he does talk about some policies you mean he talked a bit about oh. isis and and supporting <laughs> bashar al-assad as well because he says <laughs> at least they're fighting isis what do you take that. away from this presidential campaign and last night's debate well it's interesting you were talking about ronald reagan i remember as a child growing up watching Ronald Reagan and really looking up to him and admiring him as a leader of the free world. And my real concern about the Trump candidacy is not the specific comments as offensive as they were, it's just the whole tone of the man. I have a seven-year-old daughter and I can't see her looking up to Donald Trump as being the leader of the free world, not just in terms of his dreadful comments, but also in terms of his wider stance, playing footsie with the likes of Putin, um, you know, being equivocal on the stance in Syria. I don't feel he's got what it takes to, to lead the free world, and that's, that's where my problem lies. And will your seven-year-old be upset about the Putin and... Uh... Uh, well, <laughs> she will in time when she looks at the world after the candidacy. She's ahead of herself. She's quite yeah. sophisticated. Bonnie and Jan, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Fatima. Thank you, John. Now, Donald Trump has hit back at both Hillary and Bill Clinton in the second presidential debate after coming under fire over those offensive comments about women. And when Trump fights, he gets down and dirty. His performance seems to have done enough to head off the immediate crisis, but will it stop the flow of senior Republicans withdrawing their endorsements from him? Kylie Morris is in St. Louis, Missouri, where the debate took place. Kylie. Fatima, it was nasty, it was brutal, it was uncomfortable to watch. Uh, Donald Trump went into this debate having to explain uh, this very kind of lecherous uh, video recording uh, that only came out on Friday. And then he paraded in women who had previously accused Bill Clinton of sexual abuse and sat them in that room. It was an extreme measure. But perhaps to explain that, uh, I should just draw your attention to an NBC poll that has being released. It was measured from just after that video recording was released and it put Hillary Clinton 11 points ahead of Donald Trump. That is a serious lead at this stage in the campaign. So he really did get down and dirty indeed. As well as that, he's got a Republican rebellion on his hands with people like Paul Ryan, the Speaker of the House, basically saying to candidates who are running for re-election, look, save yourselves. Don't feel like you have to be loyal to Donald Trump. Simply run a good conservative race and hopefully you'll win. I will have more on that in a moment. But first, the debate last night. And I should just say it does include excerpts from that video recording. So there is strong language of a sexual nature. Hello. 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 They couldn't even bring themselves to shake hands. The two candidates stood alongside one another uncomfortably bracing for what would be a breathtakingly nasty beginning to a torturous hour and a half of mutual evisceration. In the audience for Hillary Clinton, husband Bill, daughter Chelsea, Donald Trump's wife and family and the their special guests. Hall, uh, three women who accuse Hillary Clinton of victimizing them after they say they were sexually assaulted by her husband. To get things started, a direct question to Donald Trump about a lecherous decade-old recording that has forced a Republican revolt that against his candidacy. Assault. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab him by the I could do anything. This was locker room talk. Uh, I'm not proud of it. I apologize to my family. I apologize to the American people. Certainly, I'm not proud of it. But this is locker room talk. You know, when we have a world where you have ISIS chopping off heads. It was an ambitious pivot from lewd bragging about sexual assault to the evils of ISIS. And it's one of those things. I will knock the hell out of ISIS. Thank you, Mr. And Trump. that's what I want to talk about. Secretary Clinton, do you want to respond? What we all saw and heard on Friday was Donald talking about women, what he thinks about women, what he does to women, and he has said that the video doesn't represent who he is, but I think it's clear to anyone who heard it that it 
represents exactly who he is. But Donald Trump divined now was the time to show exactly who with... Hillary Clinton is by way of her husband, smearing her by association with what America he called Bill Clinton's history of sexual abuse. Clinton. Far worse, minor words and his was action. Hillary Clinton attacked those same women and attacked them viciously, four of them here tonight. When Hillary brings up a point like that and she talks about words that I said 11 years ago. I think it's disgraceful and I think she should be ashamed of herself if you want to know the truth. Can we please hold a pause, a wry look at those applauding Secretary in the audience Clinton, and smile. When I hear something like that, I am reminded of what my friend Michelle Obama advised us all. When they go low, you go high. Clinton never directly addressed Trump's accusations against her and Bill. But as the debate turned to the fracas over her emails, Trump seized the moment, threatening to throw her into prison if he wins. I am going to instruct my attorney general to get a special prosecutor to look into your situation because there has never been so many lies, so much deception, you ought to be ashamed of Secretary yourself. Secretary Clinton, I want to follow let, up let on me, that. I'm going to let, let you just talk about it now. Because everything he just said is absolutely false, but I'm not oh, surprised. Really? It's just awfully good that someone with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country. Yeah. Because you'd be in jail. Secretary Clinton. <laughs> As the audience began to ask their questions, Trump began moving around the stage, looming over Clinton, interrupting her, appearing to deliberately crowd her space. Meanwhile, in the Twitter sphere, a former chairman of the Republican Party, also known as the GOP, was sending the world this. But for Republicans hoping beyond hope that Trump could save this, well, he kind of did. Listen to this tirade against Clinton, who seemed increasingly diminished in her answers. For 30 years she's been doing this, Anderson. I say it all the time. She talks about health care. Why didn't she do something about it? She talks about taxes. Why didn't she do something about it? She doesn't do anything about anything other than talk. Breaking with spin room tradition, it wasn't the candidates who appeared in the corral to be quizzed by the press after the debate. The Trump campaign sent out the accusers of Bill and Hillary Clinton. He, he, he's a big man and he, 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 he touched me. Nearly 20 years ago, Kathleen Willey alleged then President Bill Clinton sexually assaulted her. He denied the allegations and an independent prosecutor found insufficient evidence to proceed. Last night, she was back to accuse the Clintons again. Hillary Clinton is a fake feminist, a champion of women, an advocate of women, does not attack victims of sexual assault, rape or sexual harassment like she is. Some people might feel concerned that you're being used by the Trump campaign. What would you say to them? Not at all. If I felt that way, I wouldn't be here. Over on the other side of the room, it was a struggle for Trump surrogates to take the high ground on policy. It was incredibly important today for him to get to policy. And I think if we get to policy, if we get to the macro issues of security and prosperity, I think we win. How is he getting beyond it by sending into the room, the first thing tonight, three women who say that they've been sexually abused by Bill Clinton and who have been shunned by Hillary Clinton. How is that lifting our eyes to policy? Uh, I'm not sure it was the smartest tactic, to be perfectly frank. I'm not sure. I'm just not, I'm not saying it was a mistake, but I, I, I'm not sure it would have been my tactic. What about his move bringing those women into the audience tonight? He, he engages in sideshows and antics. That's his, that's his business. That's his life. That's not what people want in a president of the United States. We stay focused on the issues. Hillary Clinton stayed focused on the issues tonight. It's why she won the debate. Uh, if you were exactly an effective right. senator, truth, you could have done it. It's not clear who if won the debate, but America senator, may well have lost. The candidates clashed over Russia and Syria, as well as taxation policy, but this will be remembered for sex, lies and videotape. OK, I'm joined now by Stacey Washington, who's a conservative uh, radio show host. What's the show called, Stacey? Stacey, Stacey on, the right. on the right. And Chris Arps, who is a Republican strategist. Stacey, to start with you, you're a Trump supporter. Did he do well last night? Did he do enough? 
I think he did a great job. One of the things that I was concerned about was how he was going to handle the questions about the comments from 11 years ago and if he would sound contrite and if he would be able to pivot from that to hitting Hillary on some issues that she's not been addressed. And he did so very well, I thought. Did you understand he quickly started talking about ISIS when he was trying to defend those comments? I didn't really understand that. Well, I think what he was saying is, you know, and maybe not as artfully as he could have, he was trying to say that there are some things that are so much more important than what he said 11 years ago. He did sound as if he was extraordinarily embarrassed by it, and he apologized again, and then he pivoted to ISIS. Chris, mm -hmm. did he do enough for you? You used to support, right. you used to indeed work for the Cruz campaign. Right. Uh, did he do enough to win your support last night? Uh, he did not win my support last night. What I think he did was he kind of stopped the bleeding and stopped the defections from the Republican House members. But I'm not so sure that he convinced the soccer moms and the uh, fence-sitting moderates and independents to uh, support him. What could he have done? What did you want to hear from him that you didn't hear? Well, for me personally, I'd like to see him get away from kind of the tawdry stuff and talk about what he's going to do for the country. Uh, talk about Barack Obama, who's been president for seven years and has never had an economy grow over 3 percent. Talk about the foreign policy in Syria and all the problems over there. I'd like to see him focus on that instead of some of the tabloid issues. Did, did the stunt of bringing the women in, the, the accusers of uh, Bill Clinton, did that work for you? How did you feel? I mean, you mentioned the word tawdry. Right. No, it, it didn't work for me, but, you know, Donald Trump is a showman, and I think it got him great headlines today. Stacey, it's kind of nasty, isn't it? Aren't we into a deeply nasty stage when you bring in accusers? You know, there, there were women there who were, well, certainly one of the women was raped when she was 14 years old, not 12. by Bill Clinton. Sorry, 12 years yeah, old. Yeah, but Hillary I mean, defended her. But to be, sorry, but to bring that person in as part of a kind of a political showcase just feels... Um. I, indefensible, doesn't well, it? Well, I, I don't think it's indefensible. One of the things that Donald Trump is doing in this campaign is he's bringing a sense of reality to something that's previously been above and beyond Americans. One thing that I hate is how Republicans have stood back and allowed Barack Obama to run our country into the ground. They haven't given him Barack any Barack Obama resistance. wasn't even mentioned on stage well, last night. I know, but to... To finish that point, of course, what he did last night wasn't the normal course of business, but to me it shows he's willing to fight for us, the, the regular people, the Midwesterners, the ones who are forgotten. Is he willing to fight for women, though? I mean, those, those comments from 11 years ago, they are lecherous. They are course, really disagreeable. I'll never defend those comments, but what I will say is, is it more important what he said 11 years ago or what Hillary Clinton did just six months ago, a year ago, last year, while she was Secretary of State, while she was being paid by taxpayers? I think Donald Trump has a little more room to go with me. And with a lot of Americans, his support's not going down among those of us who are already for him. But he's got to win over new, as you mentioned, the soccer moms. You know, he's got to win over new voters. He's got to win over moderates. What do you think about, about the, I mean, there was an attempt to move toward foreign policy, to talk about Syria, to talk about mm -hmm. Russia. What more does he need to do to persuade Republicans like you, forget the moderates, Republicans who are not even mentioning him in their own campaigns to come back? Well, I think the main thing is we just want someone that we don't feel that's going to embarrass us and that's someone that when I go on TV or radio and talk about him that I don't necessarily feel embarrassed about defending him. I want him to stick to the issues, stick to uh, what Barack Obama has done the last eight years with Clinton and her foreign policy. I think if he sticks to those issues that he can bring the fence sitters and, and Republican moderates and independents to his side. I don't think it's over for him yet. I'm asking Donald Trump to give me a reason to vote for you. I'm not a never Trumper. But, you know, I'm, I'm on the fence right now. A plea from Donald Trump to give Republicans a reason to support him. Please. Goodness me. OK, thank you very much, Chris Huff, Stacey, Stacey Washington. That's all from us uh, in St. Louis. Now it's back to you in London. Kylie, thank you. I've been getting away with it all my